welcome back. Former chairman of the National Housing Cooperation, Timothy Mangal, has dispelled claims of his involvement in any fraudulent activity which Housing Minister Guy Joseph has reported is taking place within the NHC. Amid an investigation into irregularities at the National Housing Corporation, NHC, former chairman Timothy Mangal has shed some light on why he chose to relinquish his position at the entity. He says a lot is being made about his decision to resign, including speculation of his involvement in operations currently under investigation. Manga made it clear that he is just as interested to find out who is behind the issues highlighted by Minister Guy Joseph. Manga welcomed the probe into NHC. The NHC matter, you're also wrong. I am not one of those who have access to the online banking. I've never had access to any online banking of NHC. I am only a signatory while I was chairman to the account, okay. right? which means I, I sign checks together with the accountant or the deputy chairman. Mm -hmm. So um, there's no investigation with, with, with the online banking. If there is an investigation that I've been told, it would have absolutely nothing to do with me. And may I add that the investigation which is ongoing, right, it is not one that is sanctioned by me. It happened after my resignation as chairman, but I welcome that investigation because there's so much that have been said in the media mm -hmm. about, um, well, there are a lot of allegations from the staff, from the National Workers Union, and so much has been reported on social media and also in the media at large. He said at the very first board meeting in August, he indicated to the entire board that he would be available until the end of the year and would make his way out. When July 2019 came and the board was dissolved, I informed the minister that I would exit. He then asked me that we were at a critical stage with the PPP project, which is the um, Talvan housing development and also the shock housing development. So he asked me to stay on until the end of the year. And that I agreed to. And that, of course, is on record. You could go to the NHC immediately when we returned in August, our very first board meeting in August, it is there as minutes of the record of August 15, I think it is, right? That I indicated to the entire board that I would be available at the NHC until December of this year and I would make my way out. So it has absolutely nothing to do with the industrial disputes or the crisis, or all this talk you hear that the staff ran me out or that I stole all of NHC money. And, I, and you know, I mean, this is just pure speculation. This Mangal says when he took up the position, it was a tough decision to make. But having left, he will be in better standing to pursue his own personal interests. For At 7 News, I am Jacques Ouding. During this week's sittings of Parliament and Senate, the nation's leaders were joined by enthusiastic students from the Form 4 Social Studies class of the Corinth Secondary School. One teacher highlighted the importance of such activities when educating students. Jacques Ouding reports. Students of the Corinth Secondary School this week rubbed shoulders with the island's decision makers as they continued their studies of government in the live settings of Parliament and Senate. Social Studies teacher Princess Joseph described this activity as an innovative move to better engage students in a not particularly favored area of the curriculum. The Social Studies students and we're doing government with them now and one of the things that they do need to be um, cognizant of is the structure of government, the different arms and so Parliament forms a legislative arm of government. So we figured what better way to make it more interesting for them um, than for them to actually be present in the meetings um, of the upper house and of the lower house to see how a bill becomes a law because they have to learn that as well and to see um, how the ministers actually carry out their duties. Joseph says the activity was well received by the Form 4 Social Studies students who were elated to return to the classroom and share the experience with the wider school body. The group today, um, they were very interested because the group on Tuesday had given glowing reviews to the trip. Um, so even leaving now and speaking with them preliminary, just gauging how they feel, most of them want to come back again this afternoon um, because they, they, the house was very lively and I think that for them to be able um, to see how the debating process, see the, the role of the president of the Senate, see how the senators interact with each other and what the protocols are, it was um, very good for them. She urged teachers to diversify their lesson plans to engage all learning types. Joseph underscores that education is a means of communicating information and the efforts of a teacher to send a clear message will be reflected in the success of their students. For At 7 News, I am Jacques Ouding. Commitment is key. This is the message which the St. Lucia Diabetes and Hypertension Association seeks to advocate with their ongoing collaboration with the OECS, the Commit to Change campaign. Jacques Ouding tells us more. 
The St. Lucia Diabetes and Hypertension Association is urging members of the public to remain committed to their health goals in 2020. Representatives lamented the annual culture of New Year's health resolutions, which seemed to weather out by the end of the first quarter. Partnering with the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, SLDHA is engaging members and the general public in the Commit to Change campaign. Health practitioner at SLDHA, Claudine Mathre, outlined the importance of positive commitment when facing chronic lifestyle diseases. It makes all the difference, um, especially let's look, let's look at the feet, for example. If your sugar level, level is controlled, then it lessens the complications it lessens the chances of you having an amputation. So if you commit to keeping that sugar level controlled, that's one of the things you, sh you know surely that you can avoid because I know lots of persons, elderly persons with diabetes, and they're fine, nothing wrong with their feet. So I say if you commit to change, to keeping that sugar level controlled, you can prevent a lot of the complications that comes with diabetes. Compounding on the message of her colleague, a fellow health practitioner, Sandy Felix, outlined the impact of this campaign on diabetes, especially within the context of eating habits. For persons living with diabetes, I would always recommend for persons to change their, their eating habits because although you can eat everything, however, it depends on moderation and portion sizes. And this is what we are advocating here today. We are focusing on portion sizes because you cannot eat the same amount of food to somebody that's walking all around when you sit at the office. You understand? Your portion sizes would, would differ. We are focusing on making a commitment to change our lifestyle when it comes to our eating habits, the way we go about thinking as well, our thinking has to change because the only constant in life is change. For more information or to get involved in the Commit to Change campaign, members of the public are asked to visit the SLDHA office in Castries. For 7 News, I am Jacques Wooding. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council coordinated a stakeholder consultation get at improving the project documents in readiness for the implementation of the Caribbean Digital Transformation Project. Stakeholders from the private and public sector, as well as civil society organizations, provided feedback on the draft project implementation strategy. Glenn Simon has more. On Monday, March 9th, stakeholders were afforded the opportunity to provide input to the draft project document for the Caribbean Digital Transformation Project. This collaborative project with the World Bank aims to build digital skills and entrepreneurship within St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada and Dominica. During the stakeholder consultation, coordinated by the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, consultant with the Caribbean Digital Transformation Project with responsibility for preparing the project documents, Francilia Solomon, stated that St. Lucia will soon reap the benefits from this project. The World Bank is currently working on the requisite approvals. The project implementing unit will be set up during the month of June, and um, that would be the start of a five-year project. During um, that time, um, the World Bank has allotted an amount of 15 million US dollars for St. Lucia to implement the project. Solomon added that stakeholder consultations are integral to World Bank projects and allow direct and indirect beneficiaries of the project to raise concerns, suggestions and ideas, which can be reflected in the final project document for implementation. One of the key recommendations of the stakeholders was the inclusion of boys and young men as a clearly identified group to benefit under the project. The World Bank, because of the type of project that this is, so women and girls as a group that is not customarily involved in ICT. They see uh, um, ICT as a male dominant theme. And so to make it the level playing field and um, to foster equality, special emphasis was put on young girls as well as women as a group. However, for our St. Lucian context, and rightly as most of our stakeholders have pointed out, our young men are at risk for a myriad of reasons, and so there must be, and um, we will be 
recommending to the World Bank that young men especially um, be included as a grouping, a vulnerable grouping for this project. She noted that the Caribbean Digital Transformation Project will have a revolutionary impact on the manner in which business will be conducted in St. Lucia. The Caribbean Digital Transformation Project complements other ongoing government initiatives such as the DigiGov project, spearheaded by the Department of the Public Service, which aims to bring nearly 154 government services online. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. And now we take a second and closer look at the flurry and fanfare of the tea and testimony event. All the pink fashion forward choices from the female movers and shakers of St. Lucian society who flex their philanthropic muscles over the weekend. the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. Stay with us. Sports and weather are coming up after the break. <laughs> 